Hello, Portobello tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Shining Force CD Book 2 with me, Boenkilo. Last episode, everyone died, or, well, at least a couple of people died due to zombie ambushes and Blue Ankylo making mistakes, I suppose. Um, we defeated Gordon? Gordon was his name? Yeah, he was a jerk. Um, apparently killed the King of Emerald or whatever, and, you know... The next in a long line of villains to steal the sort of Haya from us, so we uh, we we killed him. And but I think he said he no, we have the sort of Haya now. Oh yeah, oh boy, aren't you excited? I almost forgot. Yeah, we we actually have it. So um, very important. We've got the sort of Haya. So now we have to go save Nick. Yeah, there we go. Now I know what's going on. So yeah, we're headed towards. Uh, Portobello, and then on, we're supposed to ca catch a ship to Yom, Iom, whatever, to go find Prince Nick and figure out what happened to the other army. Perfect! Alright, can I get to work here? Oh, surprise! The town of Portobello is full of monsters and zombies and skeletons. Oh no, it's Iom's men and monsters. Undead. Calling them men's a bit weird. Look, the Cypress army. Did Gordon fall? Don't allow them to take to the sea. Oh, they've spotted us. There's only one way out. Now, if you remember book one, I'm sure getting onto a boat is a great idea and we won't be attacked and crash landed somewhere else. Just like Shining Force one. And two, if you count the Nazca ship. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, let's get to work here. So, quick look around the map. We got kind of a towny sort of looking map. Treasure chests, bunch of monsters, a fair number of new monsters today, so that's nice. Let's see, we got skeletons for the first time. This guy has a steel sword. That's a nice little damage upgrade for uh, somebody, probably Deanna. Zombies again, we saw a bunch of them last time. The rat flies are still around. These guys are getting really weak. 19 attack power is really poor now, I think, honestly. like. Even against May, they do four damage. That's that's pretty bad. So those guys are old. We got a couple priests with power sticks that do more damage than the rat flies. And these guys might be new Pegasus Knights. Yeah, I think these guys are new. We've seen the boost spell before, but this is the first time we've had flyers that, you know. A little bit more dangerous, but not too crazy looking. Uh, Brass Loader might be new. Does a lot of damage. And a Master Mage. Ooh, level 3 Blaze. So I think if this was... If you're playing this on the Game Gear, if you're playing the original Shining Force Gaiden 2, essentially, uh, I think Blaze 3, if you had the same spell, would be quite dangerous. In this situation, it'll just be the same as Shining Force 1 and 2. But uh, theoretically, that would have been the big boy Blaze 4 version if you were playing on the Game Gear. I think. No one's confirmed or denied that for me just yet. I don't know if anyone ever owned a Game Gear and had enough batteries to make it through a game. Uh, is there any other items? Oh, I think on my guide, this 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 weapon will drop. The Robin's Arrow, which is your first range 3, uh, you know, arrow weapon. So that's pretty important to get, I think. So we got a Steel Sword, we got a Robin's Arrow, and we got a Treasure Chest. And that should be all. Alright. I think in this game... The Brass Loaders attack at range 1 or 2, unlike the other Shining Forces, so you can't just, uh, you can't surround them with melee units adjacent and uh, stop them from attacking. Not like it should matter much, but just kind of interesting. Alright, let's get a move on. I'll just send Natash up the middle. She'll be fine. I might send Slade the long way around because he's just going to get in the way. Split May up. I don't want the two mages up front, so... Leave some room for someone to... One of my more uh, tanky units to get up front. Now, Graham... How's Graham doing? 14 defense is not very much. Put him kind of on this angle. Don't want him to run up forward far enough to get hit by... Well, I assume he could survive a zombie and a skeleton hit, but... I don't, I don't want to have to do all the math. <laughs> also, we... Optimally, like, if I want to save a turn, we can have... Um, Deanna killed the skeleton that has the steel sword, assuming he's got a spot, uh, inventory spot. Oh, a block using that shield. 
Alright, the rat flies are coming in quick, but should be okay. Graham, yeah, let's see how much damage he takes here. Ah, he could have survived two hits, but you never know if they're going to get a double or a crit or something, so better safe than sorry. So according to my guide, we're supposed to be aiming for level 13 on this map, which, you know, Jaha's clearly nowhere near. Not that I would trust the guide all that much. Alright, let's send Luke this way, because then I have one healer. Not like, we're not really splitting up, but just balancing my forces out. Alright, Natasha, let's see. This guy's got five move, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But five can stand there and then range two both, so... Actually, is that the Robin Arrow? The Robin Arrow is range three, so he can attack us, like, no matter where we stand. We'll just do a little bit of damage with Blaze. I'm not going to waste my MP yet for the higher level. Could rush Dawn up, but not quite far enough. Let's try to make sure we kill these zombies this turn. Alright, we should heal up Graham. The uh, enemy density in this game hasn't been too bad so far. There's generally a, a bit of a... Yeah, there he goes. Not too surprised he went for Natasha. Now, she does have okay defense, right? Oof. Killed if it's a double. Alright, well that would have been... Okay. Okay. That was a lot more damage than I was expecting. 30 attack power, 14 defense, yeah, okay. She, yep. This guy has the most attack power on the entire map. So we should really not underestimate that specific guy. I think we try to rush the uh, zombie down and then block the skeleton out from attacking um, Natasha. I think Freeze will still do 3 damage, so this can be a kill. Yeah, I may have uh, <laughs> slightly underestimated uh, Natasha's survival. Oh no! Okay, hopefully she can take one more hit. Oh! Alright, alright. Those two enemies both have, like, upgraded weapons, so... They're probably the most dangerous two enemies on the on the map right now. 26 attack and 30 attack, yeah, okay, that was... That was a little bit too ambitious, I think, safe to say. If Luke had gone a little earlier, we could have healed her, you know, before the skeleton attack, so... Part of it is just sort of bad luck turn order, but... I really do need to kill that archer, though, before uh, he gets another attack. Alright, Graham is level 10. HP 2, attack 1, defense 1, quickness 1. The bat, the rat fly, the bat rat, goes for Deanna, and yeah, we can mostly ignore that guy. At least until we clean up the other more dangerous enemies. Okay, so I'm hoping Deanna can deal some significant damage here. I do need to be careful with who kills these enemies so I get their weapons, but otherwise it's, you know, whoever can attack should attack. You know, the skeleton was lower on HP than I thought. I probably could have just killed him. Alright, so... I don't think Chester will be able to do 21 damage. Chester... Man. Let's see. Seven. Well, maybe you'll get a... <laughs> Counter-attack! Oh, Chester. Well, enjoy your level 8. 2 HP, 1 attack, 2 defense. That's just what I need, a very defensive archer. Alright. Now, I don't want Natasha to kill either of the enemies because she does not have um, inventory space available. So... 
under the assumption that someone is going to get a turn before the archer, which is a big assumption. I'm going to have her weaken it enough that someone can finish it off. All right, Eric, do you have an inventory space? No. That's not good. Level 12? Hey, he got a lot of experience for hitting this rat fly. That's really... I. Okay, one thing that might have just happened here is we have rat flies with the same stats as the ones from a few battles ago, but they're giving way more experience than they used to. Like, that was not even a kill and we got 23 experience. So, it may be that they are a higher level rat fly and the game kind of made a mistake. Like, maybe they're supposed to be the next sort of tier of flying bats. So they got that level, but they didn't actually get their stats or name. Anyway, Dawn does not have any inventory. Great. Okay, this is getting really bad for Natasha if, uh, if no one has any inventory space to get that Robin's arrow. Because I really do want the arrow. Anyway, HP 1, attack 1, defense 1 for Dawn. Not amazing. Eric has been consistently a little bit better than her. <sighs> it's grass. She should take slightly less damage, right? I put her in 30%. Yeah. But now the skeleton can kill her. Okay, this is... Perfect. You get this kill, you can block the attack up from the skeleton, and he's the one that can actually use the Robin's arrow. Probably my best archer at this point, so there you go, Graham. Wow. Another one of those one turns away from would have had a game over there. Yeah, don't underestimate the, uh, the first pull in this battle. Like, those, those guys are tough. All right, Luke could kill the skeleton. He does have... I should have bought herbs for him. Oh, well. Actually, it, I think that zombie... How far can the zombie move? Five, one, two, three, four, five. So if I put Luke there, the zombie could attack him. That's probably okay, honestly. It's no big deal. Because if I don't put him in this tile, the zombie probably won't move. And uh, I'd rather he kind of came towards us, I think. He'd be in a pretty good spot where we can hit him from range. Alright, I don't think Slade needs can reach anyone that needs heals. Maybe I could use him to lure out the other bats. Yeah. And this is just for 10 XP, no big deal. Let's just skip it. Alright, Chester. I could give the kill to Chester. Should get a steel sword out of it, but then Chester will have to give his weapon. Oh, but it's it's like only Deanna that can even equip it. Deanna should get the kill then. Agility 11. Should be getting a turn very soon, so that's fine. Also, Chester needs to get healed. I mean, I'd like to get May the kill because she needs the, the levels. But probably Deanna does as well. Well, not as badly. I'm still going to leave it to Deanna, it's fine. He, he should be getting a turn any second. 11 agility, right? Alright, there you go. Don't miss. Good boy. Alright, so, so now at this point, I'm pretty sure if we ended up uh, resetting the map, like egressing and coming back... Those two enemies wouldn't actually have their, um, they wouldn't have those two weapons anymore, because they wouldn't drop again, so. I think they would just, they'd have weaker weapons, so it'd be easier if we had to do it again. I think. It's like the power ring in Shining Force 2, or the, well, the heat axe is weird in Shining Force 1, because you could get, like, infinite heat axes if you kept resetting the planes map in, uh, you know, the, the planes battle with, uh, with, right, right after Vankar joins, you're fighting, I think, Elliot. That was an interesting battle. Called a lizard man. There was one lizard man that had a heat axe, and if you egressed after getting the heat axe, you could keep spawning more. But that was only a Shining Force 1 thing. I don't think it was in the remake on the GBA or in Shining Force 2 or, or 3 or this one. Enemies don't just respawn with items. Okay, I don't really want to stand on that tile because it'll block an attack.
Maybe Chester's the only one that needs the heal right now. Hopefully we get some good units to join up and then I can kick Chester out. <laughs> Alright, perfect. May... not... This is a bad map for May, all things considered. Lots of undead that she doesn't really do much damage against. This will still get her a level up regardless, so I'm going to do it. Maybe she'll learn a new spell. Five damage. Level 10, HP 1, MP 1, attack 1, defense 2. Not a great magic level up. Only 1 MP, sadly. Alright, well one of the good things here is we should be able to stand on this square, equip the Robin's Arrow, which is much stronger and, like, it's a... It's probably the best upgrade you'll your archers ever get, is when they go from 2 range to 3 range, and also get a good damage increase. I think if I was making a, you know, my Shining Emblem, HP 1, Attack 1, Defense 1, Quick 1, I don't think I'd lock the long range bows behind halfway through the game like this. I think I would just have options, so you can have... You could choose to purchase early on a range 2 bow that might do more damage, and then a range 3 bow that has longer range but does a little bit less damage, or maybe less accurate, or something like that. That'd be a nice way to balance it. And then, just like the Paladins, or the Knights, you could bring both if you want, if you have the money to buy both, or whatever, and you could do the more powerful weapon at low range, and the, the weaker weapon at long range. That, that, I think that would make archers a lot better in the early game. Because... In Shining Force 1 and 2, archers are pretty bad until the Robin's Arrow pops up. So that might be a way to balance it. Longer range in general. I'd also like to have it so that, like, you can't shoot through walls. <laughs> I've always thought it's kind of funny, like, in generally in Fire Emblem, but I think Shining Force 2, you can cast magic or shoot arrows straight through a wall. Like, I, I guess, like, outside a castle wall... Shooting an arrow over a wall isn't totally insane, but especially when you're inside and there's a roof. Uh, I can't imagine how you would you know, shoot. You can't even see the target. How the heck are you shooting an arrow? <laughs> Maybe magic makes sense. I don't know, because you summon flames over on the other side, but I don't know. Sounds like a stretch to me. I could probably have terrain block range, like... You know, trees and walls and stuff would block ranged attacks. Or at least, at the very least, even if you could still do it, they would diminish accuracy, right? Or with magic, maybe they do less damage because you're, sh you're, you're, you're shooting fireballs through a forest and not all the fire magic gets through. I have lots of cool ideas. I, I used to, when I was younger, I used to spend lots of time sort of theory crafting theoretical games I would want to make and... You put a lot of work into that as a youngster. Well, Natasha is just really good at luring over enemies to nearly kill her. I gotta be smart with her. I gotta be more careful. I should probably, um... I should probably give her the Protect Milk. That would be smart, right? I've got that on somebody. She could get the bread for HP. Or I think I've got one Protect Milk somewhere. I was kind of hoping to wait till we promote, but... Seeing as she's almost died this map already... Yeah, we could give her a Protect Milk for, like, plus four defense. We've got two. We could get her plus eight defense if I wanted. Yeah, I'll have to think about that. That would be... I'm just... I'm a little bit worried that we lose those stat gains when we promote. Because I'm not 100% sure how Shining Force CD works. If it's like Shining Force 2, which it usually is, then you wouldn't lose them. So it should be okay. It was really only Shining Force 1 where stat uppers were completely lost on promotion. Although we do lose movement up, so using a running pimento unpromoted would be a bad idea, because when you promote it would reset your uh, your movement to whatever your uh, promoted base movement would be. Ooh, lots of damage there. Yeah, those rat flies. Rat flies seem to be really good for experience. Like, that's surprisingly, very surprisingly high income. All right, Natasha, who's not dead, <laughs> let's uh, at least take advantage of the area of effect here, you know. Yeah, I should give her... I think I'm, I am going to give her some Protect Milk between the next battle, probably. At least one. I think having Graham finish this guy off is fine. I mean, the bat doesn't really do much damage, or rat, whatever. It's, it's 
Is it really a rat? But, um... Just get rid of it with someone who can shoot from range, you know? Oh, look at this! A double area of effect. Getting some value out of our mages here. I mean, they didn't kill anything, but... All right, we definitely want to make sure we kill these guys or block up the path to Natasha. But, yeah, look at that. No problem. Eric is so good. So good. Oh, yeah, I might have rushed forward with Jaha a little bit too much there. I wasn't thinking of Pegasus. Oof. Pegasus Knights. All right, well, first things first, we have to destroy this, this Hell Sniper. And then we'll, then we'll figure out how to save Jaha. Um, you're just going to focus on healing, I think. At least now, if we don't kill the Hell Sniper, Natasha should live. I don't know how we're saving Jaha yet, but... We'll cross that bridge in a minute. Alright, this shouldn't hurt that much? Okay, never mind. Jaha's dead. I really didn't think the Priest would hit that hard, but... Uh, well, good thing I healed Natasha. My, uh, my game sense for this battle has been way off. I, I keep expecting I'll get another action or be able to move out of the way or not die immediately. And I have consistently over, overestimated my turns or my character's ability to heal or <laughs> or do anything useful. All right, so we've only got one healer now. I should have. I really, really should have bought more, uh, more medical herbs for Luke. Or move some over. HP one, MP one, attack one, defense one. All right. You know what? The, my excuse. Here's my excuse. Last episode, uh, I forgot to equip this as plump. Maybe that would have killed the uh, the the enemy before they attacked. Um, last, last episode was a different, um, recording session. So this is a new recording session. So maybe I planned on moving some herbs around or something, and I just, I forgot because it's a different day. Alright, well one thing for sure is if we damage the priest, he will almost certainly waste his time healing now rather than attacking. I'm a little bit concerned about May. She's not very sturdy. I kind of want to just make a line because I don't... Well... I don't know how many more actions we're going to get before the Pegasus Knights are going to move. I could use a herb on someone else. Is anyone, like, not able to survive two hits? Probably, uh, Archer. Or, 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 Archer. Chester, the Archer. All I remember is they are Archer. Could heal Natasha, but oh right, Jaha's gonna die. That's what I had to do. Someone was probably yelling at me to save Jaha. There you go. Because the Pegasus Knight is gonna fly over and kill him. Any second. Alright, well, seeing as Eric gets a turn. I bet you he could kill the priest. Or guarantee that it is gonna spend turns healing. That's fine. And Luke has no herbs, and Slade does. Boy, I don't know if Slade could take two of these hits either. I think Jaha's just gonna have to hang out over there and hope for the best. It's a good thing we're not playing Fire Emblem, or man, I had to, I'd be, half my team would be gone already. All right, let's see if we did this safely enough. That one really wants a piece of Jaha. Well, good thing I used a herb on him. All right, Deanna. Maybe I'll test that theory that if an enemy starts adjacent to someone, especially your leader, they'll just attack your leader. Level 12, HP 1 and MP 1, defense and quickness. Well, that's all we get. If he gets countered, he might die. Come on, Jaha. Good, no counter. Um.
The only one that's in death range is Jaha. So I can move Chester out to break the formation. This guy is going to attack very soon. Uh, I was really hoping we could just kill this Pegasus Knight before he gets in action, but I think we're going to get hit. Good. The Priest wastes his turn. Because again, if the Priest had attacked Chester, Chest Priest plus Pegasus Knight might have killed him. Hmm. Well, my theory of them attacking the leader if they started adjacent did not work. It was a good theory. It was a fine theory. Sometimes it works. Alright, so now we've got Natasha, who could definitely use a level up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Just finish this one off. Come on, learn some new magic, girl. I know she learned Blaze 2 pretty recently, but still, come on. Level 12, MP2, defense 1, quickness 1, no spells. Damn it. Alright, let's try to focus down this Pegasus Knight before we worry about the priest. Good job, Graham. You know what? Graham with the Robin's Arrow is definitely, definitely pulling his weight now. Attack 1, defense 1, no HP or whatever, so... Fine. Uh, May... I don't think the priests are very high level, so we don't get a lot of experience for this, but... Pretty good damage, anyway. Let's not have the level 12 character um, kill the priest. We'll let someone else... I think Slade could kill him? He's at a pretty low level. 26 damage. Or 26 attack versus 16 defense. Yeah, he should do... I think he'll do 8 damage. There you go. Level 9 Slade. HP 1, MP 2, attack 2. No spells. Alright. Yeah, we're pretty low on healers, that's for sure. So, Jaha's gonna stay back. Oh, you know what I should do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want him attacking anyway. And I could just have him use the herb for sure. But... I'm gonna send I'm gonna send Dawn over because I gotta get that treasure chest. I gotta send someone to the right anyway. She's a good option. She's got an inventory spell. Um, but yeah, this way Luke can use that herb and also get some experience out of it, which no one else really would get. So. Otherwise, his turn's kind of wasted. Right? I could have him try to kill something. That would probably help. But his attacking form is kind of the same problem as Jaha, where he can't move very far. He's only got one range, you know. Hey, look at this. Range 2 archer. See? Super useful. There's probably a good argument for giving Chester the Robin Arrow first, because um, Graham has more movement, so it's more likely that Graham can get into position to attack with a, a normal bow and arrow. But... I'd rather, like, I'd rather, like, make the good archer better than to make the poor archer less poor, if that, if that makes logic sense. Can't quite shoot that far, though. Alright, is there anyone over here needing some healing? I might have been a little bit too uh, quick to spend MP on this map. Started healing people who did need to get healed before I uh, knew how long it would take or fully calculated it all. Anyway, Eric can get a kill. That's fine. Actually, that was, again, kind of dumb because we could have given someone more experience. Like, well, Maeve would not have been in range, but... Someone at a lower level, anyway. Uh, nothing. I definitely need to go shopping after this battle's over. So what is this? This, this Master Mage has Blaze 3. Which is going to do 14 or 15 damage, if I remember correctly, to uh, small area of effect. I think I'll try to lure them with Deanna. Mm -hmm. 
he can take... He should be able to survive the priest hit, the, uh, the, uh, brass cannon attack. Well, okay, now things are a little different. Go for it, Eric. Level 13, HP 1, attack 1, defense 2. Boy, that's a, that's a good Eric. Um, so the only one that really needs healing is Jaha, and he's so far back, he's not going to get anything in this fight. Um. I guess I just move Slade forward. Oh, he's out of everything anyway. Did I forget to sell? I forgot to sell the Iron Rod. Alright, well, Slade's pretty much done for this map as well. Alright, so... Conveniently, the mages continue to be dumb and try to do physical attacks on adjacent enemies rather than, uh, you know, using their powerful magic. Unfortunately, he's getting healed up. But still, if Chester can attack... Or not Chester. The artist formerly known as Chester. Um, what's his name now? Eric? Eric's still a good name. Nothing wrong with that. But. I guess Eric was a knight in um, Shining Force 2. So it makes... I should... I should remember that. It's no big deal. Alright, so my goal here will be to kill the Brass Loader. While Eric does a little bit of damage to the mage every turn. Until we can get in there and finish it off. It should only take a couple turns. But we are kind of choke pointed here with all my slow units that can't like push through. We could have probably done a better uh, kind of prepare in advance, you know, group up and all come together. There you get to see the range one brass loader attack. I guess I could have bows that have range one too. Like, why? What stops someone from shooting a bow at relatively short range? Is there any reason you can't shoot someone? You, you can't fire a bow at someone adjacent to you? Is there? Is there a reason you couldn't do that? All right, Slade, getting all the kills. It's good. I, I really do need the healer to get some level ups. Now, Graham. One thing that's really nice about having the range three bows is when you're dealing with enemies with area of effect magic, like this Master Mage, we can keep a sort of split up. I'm actually going to rush over this side. You can keep your uh, your forces split up so you're not affected by area of effect and still attack the enemy at the same time. But if everyone has range 2 or 1, then you end up kind of, well, susceptible, you know. Or sometimes the mage is just kind of dumb. Oh, wait, is that not dumb? Oh, he could have killed me. I forgot that Deanna took... Alright. I... I apologize for not really paying attention. Wow, that could have killed me. Uh, so we picked up a quick ring. Uh, that's our first ring in this game, by the way. I forgot to mention it. Uh, five agility. I think it casts egress if you use it as an item. So, well, that's, that's nice. Now, if the priest was smart, they probably could have attacked Deanna and they would have won. If the AI ever got really advanced, they uh, they have a way of winning right there. Maybe in my uh, in my head game, that's something that I would program in. I would uh, I would make it so the enemy, if they could see a way to win the match, aka killing your lord, um, they take it no matter what. That that supersedes healing because they could just win. Because if a human was playing, that's what you would do. Why bother healing when you can just win right now? Because by healing, they've lost, you know. Chester level 9. Some stats. No one really... Oh, it ends when you kill the mage. Oh, well. I thought you'd be able to kill the priest. But... Tell me, has Prince Blue number 2 of Cyprus been taken hostage? Yes, it's true. He's been held at, fo at Elgum. The fort there is impenetrable. Self-destructs initiated. Even the priest who is at full health just suicided. So it's true, Cyprus was defeated, and the prince is being held, ca held captive at the Fort Algum. Everyone on the boat, we're going to Algum. I'm glad the enemy mage was so uh, quick to tell us what was going on. Oh, wait, we can't actually get on the boat? You've gotten this far, but you're not taking my boat. Attack him, don't let him near the ship. Was it really necessary to have two battles in Portobello to get on the boat? Deanna, there's the Yom ship. We must defeat them to get to the ship. Wow. Kind of a redundant battle. 
Anyway, we do need to end the episode here, of course. But hey, look, there's a lot more of mostly the same enemies in a tiny ship. It's really tiny. I, I, I don't think everyone's going to be able to fit on that. Maybe just uh, two or three of you. <laughs> it's more like a toy boat. One thing I will do is I'll aggress because we're. I'm going to probably buy some... Uh, I should have used Natasha to aggress. I was thinking Deanna, right? Because the Lord. Uh, I want to buy some medical herbs and stuff. And there's probably not a new weapon shop or anything, but we should, just in case, take a look. Deanna really should be learning some bolts soon because he's already got lots of MP. All right, so there's nobody poisoned or died. Nobody died magically. You guys are happy. Nobody even died today, even though they probably should have. I got, I think I got really lucky, to be honest. Um, I, I think I will do some, some inventory management between episodes just to save a little bit of time here, because we're already pretty late. But uh, yeah, no new gear, but I'm gonna buy a bunch of medical herbs, maybe a couple healing seeds. Now that we have a fair bit of money, we can buy the 20 HP heal rather than the 10 HP heal. And I know it's 20 times as expensive, but at some point you've got enough money that it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, we don't need the backup longsword anymore, for instance. Let me just do the, the easy stuff on camera, or the obvious stuff on camera. I'll probably want to figure out who to give the quick ring to. Yeah, we got one power stick drop that's stronger. That's why Slade is killing so well. See, I did do that on purpose. I gave him the more powerful stick <laughs> so that he would be more likely to get some experience. And that was working, so... I think I'm going to keep the Robin's Arrow on Graham, even though balance purposes you could give it to Chester to, to even them out, but like I already talked about that. Uh, Alright, so that's all of that. One thing though, I, I think... I think for sure I am going to use one of my stat uppers now. I don't, I don't mean to hoard them, I just, you know, it's hard to know early on who needs it on your first playthrough. But Natasha seems like an obvious choice. She's... Like, she's almost dying over and over and over again. So let's let's get that. So we got the bad luck there. I'm going to be using some save states to make sure I get the maximum roll. Um, I have done this before. I don't always do this in Shining Force games. Sometimes I feel like it's cheating. Sometimes I feel like it's just standard procedure. But the... Um, yeah, there you go. We got it on our second try. The, the, the range is between 2 to 4. So you can get up to plus 4 at best. So I feel like it's wasting it if you just except your plus two. So that gives her a considerable H, uh, defense bonus, and I think I'll use the Cheerful Bread as well, um, because it's just HP. The Cheerful Bread is like one of the weaker stat uppers. Uh, I might just give it to Slade, because he's got terrible HP. And I can't see benching my healer anytime soon. Like, Natasha is an easy person to use, because I think you have to use her. We can't get rid of her. And she's a little bit fragile, so that helps. Uh, my other healer, Luke, is actually surprisingly tanky. Like, his defense is a bit low, but his HP is very high. And Slade is probably our most fragile unit, so... Yeah, let's give him 4 HP. Perfect. That's I believe that's the maximum for the bread as well. Maybe that means I should just use the Protect Milk on Slade. Um, is there anyone else with low defense? Jaha, I don't care about. He's probably getting kicked off the team. Dawn's defense is kind of low, but I'm assuming she's going to be like the late sprouter, late, late grower knight. Like, Eric got really good stats early game. I bet you, as a paladin, Dawn will beat him. But we'll see how it turns out. I kind of don't want to give either, in either of them stat uppers just so I can see their natural stats. They're both good. I mean, Eric's a fair bit better right now. Uh, six more attack and eight more. He's way better right now. That's... For two level ups, he's got way better stats. She's she's agile because of the quick ring. Yeah, no, he beats her in everything. Wow. He just beats her. Anyway, I think I've mostly convinced myself. Now, I could argue to give the defense to Luke because he does fight more than Slade. And he's got a lot of HP, so it kind of uh, stacks up. It, having more defense and more HP means you can take more hits than having low HP and high defense. But... I think I'm just going to go with the person that has the lowest defense, which is Slade. And he got the max roll right away. Right away. Um, other than that, stat uppers, we have Quick Chicken for Agility, which barely makes any difference at all. Uh, we've got a 
powerful line, which I kind of want to hold on till I get like a flyer or something, because I generally push that on the flyer. And uh, that's it. So I used the two. That's, I used three of them. That's pretty good. I didn't hoard it for the entire game, guys. I didn't forget. <laughs> All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll go buy some medical herbs and stuff off camera. And next time we'll come back for, I believe, the final battle of chapter two. Hope you've enjoyed and see you then.